that connection. Yes. I mean, when you talk about drugs and alcohol, and and as as such a profound state, a teach a state you can learn. I mean, if it doesn't kill you, it will teach you a lot. You know, and I learned a lot from drugs and alcohol, every bit of it, you know, and, and, but the thing that's so interesting is when something leaves your space, whether it's a drug or a lover or a parent, it's sort of like there's this gap and you think you'll never be able to, you know, get in your boat and go from here to there, that there's, there's no there there and you're kind of like, and then the gap closes. You know, like if, if you just kind of hang in however, you know, the gap always closes and then you're someplace else and you are on the other side and this is a new place and, and you can function and, 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 and row and do, ever, do, whatever, do whatever you do there. I mean, I think part of what was so great, like say acid, I loved acid. I mean, acid was perhaps amphetamines, acid, I don't know which one I liked the most. I liked hangovers, like not the pain of the hangover, but when you before my drinking was really, really bad, when it was sort of like I would get good and drunk and I would wake up in the morning and I would just be like, you know, like in that altered state and then you'd have a cup of coffee, maybe a little bit of sugar, and you'd get really high and you'd be really crazy for about an hour or two and it was when I was still working jobs and I would just write great poems in that state, you know? So it's just like there were, there were like things that were about the effect of drugs on my um, chemistry that were sort of marvelous for a while until it wasn't marvelous. But acid, for example, taught me like that you know, you'd be tripping in a bar, you know, with someone and, and, and you'd be like, look at that guy. And there'll be a guy lying, standing against the wall. But somehow in the state that I was in, it would look like he had roots all over him. Like he looked like a tree. And then suddenly I started to look at him and he was covered in roots. And then he came forward and he would smile and it was like the tree had come out, out of the wall and we were like dying laughing like this tree is suddenly and suddenly he was a guy that was sort of trying to hit on these two girls which was me and my girlfriend you know and it was just like we would just our perceptions like somebody would go like that and they say did you see that and I was like no and I said do it again and I was like oh yeah you know and it was just what I learned was that you know like there were just all these it seemed like there were all these realities next to each other and behind each other. And indeed, it's true. You know, in time, in, in the speed of time and in the slowness of time. And, and, you know, when somebody tells you a story and you're like, and then suddenly you're like, oh, I see where they're going. And you like fall into that story and it becomes a whole other world. So there was a way in which I, I started to understand something when I did drugs, which made reality really understandable when I no, no longer did drugs. I started to understand that, that you, if you hang into any state, you'll start to understand its dimension, its inventory, what it has, and start to understand how to operate there and how to make art there. And, you know, it's so interesting because now, you know, like, so I am good at writing about altered states, many of which, you know, like, I, I still encounter. And when I look at other people's writing, it's so, I mean, like there's a, there's a, a Native American writer named James Welch, and he wrote a, a, a short novel called, I think, The Winter, Winter of the Blood. Uh, it's a very short novel about alcoholism, but he writes about hangovers as an altered state, and it's so, he was a poet too, and it's so beautiful. Like he really gets it. Whereas a writer like Jonathan Franzen, who, you know, he's not a bad writer. He's like a, a narrative writer. He certainly is, you know, skillful. But one of his characters in one of his books, um, it was like a, a, a father who was taking drugs and like, you know, like for whatever, you know, health reasons. And, and he started to kind of freak out. And the whole passage was describing what his freaking out was like. And Jonathan Franzen couldn't do it. He could not narrate, narrate an altered state. And I think that like poetry um, and, and all the altered consciousnesses that I've ever experienced, you know, like really, really kind of, I mean, they prepare you to die, you know? They prepare you to lose things. They prepare, prepare you for falling in love, you know, because it's sort of like, how do, I, how do I take this in? You know, like how do you suddenly have a feeling and you think, oh, this is not a good person. And it's like, what do you do with that perception? I mean, I, I, I just think that, like, there's, there's no loss that doesn't have something on the other side of it. And some things like life, we don't know what's on the other side of this, you know. And my mother died in April, and it was like, 
it was so crucial to be able to stay, stay with that. There were several years that she was dying and, and I was there for every bit of it. And it just was probably one of the most amazing experiences of my life, you know, and, and so it, it's enabled me to let go of her.